Commercials are an integral part of the modern child's life. They have been for quite some time. I'm sure most everyone who watched television growing up can perfectly recall specific sets of commercials for junk food and toys that were either endlessly pounded into your malleable mind or specifically resonated with you. Transform this wooden fossil into a fierce blown T-Rex. For me, one of these commercials was for Mattel's Pixel Chicks. I was quite young during the run of this toy, around 6 when they first came out. Even so, I perfectly remember the desire to have this toy despite never owning it. I've always been very into video games, and something about the transparent LCD screen was extremely alluring to me. About a half a year or more ago, I decided that I would finally own some, because honestly, shit sucks recently and I found some for cheap on eBay. My hope is that this video serves as a comprehensive retrospective on the history, extended internet content, and legacy of Pixel Chicks, as well as a review of the specific toys I came into the possession of. Pixel Chicks were introduced in 2005 by Mattel. They are an electronic digi-friend, a 2D girl in a 3D world. Their basic functionality was that of a conventional digipet like Tamagotchi, but with the spin of being based on a friend instead of a pet, as well as being entrenched in early 2000s it girl culture. The chicks themselves lived in LA themed houses, dressed in the trendiest clothes, and had a lot of tood. Not much is known about their development or impact on the company, but initially they were at least given partial credit for a strong quarter 3 performance for Mattel in 2006. Mattel continued the brand for a good 5 years and expanded upon it into a multimedia franchise in that time so it seems for at least a while the toys were selling well enough to justify that. Personally, their unique characterization performed by famous voice actress Tara Strong, their massively cute design, and their built-in interconnectivity all the way back in 2005 makes this a digipet to me in a class of all its own. The four toys I have acquired are as follows. The blue one-story house, the pink two-story house, the mall, pet store, and hair salon version, and the pink beetle car. So let's get into it. TV when there's a party at my place? You can head with Pixel Chicks and have a Pixel Day. Anything can happen, no telling what she'll say. Uh, go out in this? Her manners are as perfect, her clothes are really hot. Fabulous. Play through every level, and look at all she's got. Visit other Pixel Chicks and hang out even more. But don't you dare ignore her, or this chick is out the door. She needs your help to play, so let's have a Pixel Day! New Pixel Chicks Interactive Game, a 2D girl in a 3D world, each sold separately. The single story homes were the first toys in the line, so I'll use this opportunity to explain the basic functioning of the toy line. As you can see, the most interesting thing about this toy is its screen. The effect used in most of the toys is that there's an LCD screen utilized that is transparent when electricity is sent to its individual pixels. The pixels that are off then can be used to draw the characters in the scene. By using this transparency, the chicks can appear to be using the furniture inside of the house, as well as do things like leave through the front door and go upstairs. Some of the toys pull off this effect better than the others, but we'll get to that later. Other than the transparent LCD, the innards of this thing are basically what you'd see in any other toy like this. A motherboard that runs the game is connected to some ribbon wire that connects to the screen. There's no internal battery, so the small amount of game data storage on it will be wiped out if you run out of batteries. With the general stuff out of the way, we can review this specific toy. My particular toy is the H8331 version of the single story house. It is among the first three toys released in the line. As you can see it has a blue color scheme and with its columns and window ornamentation I think it's going for a small scale second empire style. At the moment all that can be seen inside the house is a singular table and a black screen, but that'll change when it's powered on. Seven buttons with different pictographs line the bottom of the toy and towards the top is a pink window. The pastel pinks and yellows of these features really serve well in making the toy very cute looking. On each side you can see a port in, which is missing its cover, and a port out, which corresponds to the only door on the house. These will be utilized when hooking up the toy to other toys in the line. The back is boring and the bottom serves as an access point for the batteries, as well as where you can reset the toy. After putting in four AAA batteries and setting the time, we meet our friend, the chick. This particular one is the blonde girl. Now that the screen is powered on, you can see into the actual house. The interior is very cute. You can see the little molded furniture thanks to a few LEDs that power on inside of the house. Those lights also serve well as backlighting while you're playing. The house has a window outside to show the time, a couch, some stairs, a few shelves, a door to the outside, and a table with a chair to sit on, all following the cute pastel pink, blue, and yellow color scheme. As the chick walks around the house, she'll actually seem to interact with these physical real world objects with the help of some clever animation. This effect is demonstrated best when you use the table at the center of the room. If you pay attention to the table, you'll see that the screen is actually positioned between it and the rest of the room. 
That's why you can see it when the power is off. This feature helps provide actual depth to the toy, because the chick can appear to be in a layer between the table and the chair, helping the effect greatly. This feature of the toy is why I've been fond of it all these years later. I love the ingenuity of this idea, and it works really well. It could be argued that this is actually one of the first times augmented reality was utilized in a toy. Unfortunately, unless you're looking at the toy head-on, the effect starts to fall apart, because it's based on a head-on perspective. The upside to that is that the game is a handheld, so you'll have control over how you're looking at it. In addition, the game doesn't require the background to play, it just adds to the experience. So the point of the actual game is pretty familiar to anyone who's had a virtual pet before. Keep your friend fed, entertained, and happy, and they will grow and unlock new features. Ignore them, and they will leave or die. Pixel Tricks is controlled using the seven buttons on the front. The check mark and X are used to confirm and deny certain functions, and the remaining five buttons let you do different activities with your friend. The food button lets you choose between a few different options to have your chick eat. Starting off, you can feed them a sandwich, soup, or popcorn. They'll walk over to the fridge and retrieve their snack. The fashion button lets you dress up your chick in different trendy clothing. Starting out, you have the basic outfit, a school outfit, and your sleep dress. The smiling face button is called the fun button. It lets your chick do activities around the house. Starting off, you have the option to either watch TV, which will get your chick on the couch for a bit with some popcorn while she channel surfs, or you can use the telephone, which will either get a dial tone or have a short conversation. For both of these activities, I can't really tell if your button inputs change what's happening. I don't think so. But I also see that sometimes the chick will cry at the TV, and I don't know if that's random or not. The next button is the door or go out button. This button can't really be used tonight, so I'll show more of it later, but as you can imagine, it lets your chick go outside of the house. If you try to have her leave when it's too late, she'll just say no way. The chick will refuse to do stuff she doesn't want to do, like go to sleep too early or sleep without pajamas on. She'll also get annoyed with you if you don't play with her for too long, and will start to do activities well on her own without you. Leaving her alone for long enough will cause her to turn herself off in a huff. It's a fun bit of attitude that helps these characters feel like they're real instead of just objects that you completely control. The last button is the sleep button. As previously mentioned, the chick won't want to go to sleep under certain conditions, but if you can coax her into doing this, this is how you turn the game off. It's also a cute display of the effects this toy uses to convince you it's a real house. The chick will yawn and climb the stairs. Once up there, she'll turn off a real LED light positioned behind the upstairs window and you can hear her get ready for bed and fall asleep. It's really cute and something they totally didn't need to do, but they put the effort in and it works. After she falls asleep, the game will turn off until you press one of the buttons again. The game also has some random events that happen every so often. I'll put some periodically in the video to show them off, but for an example, the chick might swat a fly. So that's the basics of the gameplay, and we'll be saying goodbye to this chick to move on to the next toy, where we'll get a bit deeper into the game and see the new features of the two-story house. Let's go upstairs! Pink, pink, pixel chick, new two-story house. Now two rooms to play all night. Hello, bye! New pixel chick's two-story house is in the upstairs room, we told separately. The most immediately obvious difference about this house is its second story, and we'll get to that, but first I want to talk about its style. I have the K5447 version of this toy, one of the two different versions that I can find. It seems that they didn't make one in the style of the one-story house that I have. Its main colors are that of pink, orange, and blue. The architecture of the house itself is of the Spanish colonial revival that was and still is popular in Los Angeles, and other places previously colonized by Spain, like Florida. Rich white people like to be reminded of times like that, I suppose. In any case, that style in Los Angeles culture in general is the sort of it girl spin that these toys were going for. You can see a few palm trees outside the house, and a flat roof with a pool on top also serves as a cute disguise for the speaker. Speaking of the speaker, there is a new feature to this toy that I'm very happy about. A volume adjuster to make my chick not scream every single word she says is located at the back of the toy. This toy has two ports and the same seven buttons as before, but if you look closely, two of those buttons serve dual purposes now. Now back to the immediately obvious feature I mentioned before. Two floors, but only one screen. This is a clever bit of mechanics. The second floor adds a whole new environment for the game, but it would also require an investment in adding a second screen, which is probably one of the more expensive parts to manufacture in this toy. 
So instead of doing that, they put the wiring through an axis that can flip over whichever room you're currently playing in. And all they have to do is flip which pixels they are putting the graphics on upside down. A small pin keeps the screen in place and tells the toy which room you are currently trying to view. It's really neat. We can take a look at the interior without powering on the game this time because of this screen. The first floor is mainly the same as the one story house in its makeup and placement, but it has a cartoony postmodern style that is less classical than the previous house. I believe this to pretty much be an exact copy of the pink one story house that I don't own. The real star of this show is the second story. It is a bedroom with a bathroom connected. The bedroom is a very cute bed and vanity, and the bathroom is a sink, shower, and toilet. It's a bit basic overall, but in the end it's just more little nice furniture that's always fun to look at in dollhouses. Same thing as last time, four AAA batteries and we can power on. So I want to get my major gripe with this toy that makes me not like it as much as the single story house out of the way. The screen being able to flip is cool, but it also means that it's not behind anything to provide depth. When the chick sits at the table in a two story house, she sits in front of it instead of behind it. They didn't solve this problem very well, they didn't change the programming or the graphics or anything, they just ignored it. Another side effect of the screen change is that it's further away from the background. So, it means it's easier for the perspective to be off when you aren't looking at it head on. Anyways, this toy is pretty similar to the first one, especially on the first floor. So I'm going to try to focus on stuff I didn't show in the first toy that I can show in this toy because I actually managed to progress further in this toy than the other one. I also filmed this portion when it was daytime in the game, so my chick will be more willing to do stuff. Also, in this particular toy I have the dark haired girl instead of the blonde girl. The most exciting thing is the new activities. I have a cute new 8-ball mode that can serve as basically a real 8-ball. Ask her a question and the chick gives you a randomized answer. Ask me a question. Ask again later. Cannot predict now. Sign point to yes. Cheesed to meet you? No. I also have an actual game I can play. The chick's fish drops out of their bowl and is flying through the air, so you have to keep it from hitting the ground, so it eventually can land safely back in its bowl. It's a fun basic little game that I've played in a lot of things before. The new food options I have are a classic comedy act, and some sort of drink or smoothie. I also have a few more clothing options now. There's a crop top with shorts that my friend works out in, a bikini for suntanning at the beach. Speaking of the beach, let's actually go somewhere this time. Different clothing options can take you to different places when you go outside. The basic option just has the chick walk out and back in, the school outfit makes your chick go to school, and the bikini has your chick come back with a nasty sunburn. That is pretty much all the later game stuff I was able to get to for the first floor, so let's move on upstairs. Simply flip up the screen and your chick will now be in her room, after she walks up some stairs. When you do this, the food button becomes the vanity button and the go out button becomes the bathroom button. The bathroom button lets her brush her teeth, wash her hands, and use the toilet. The clothes upstairs are a bit more limited. Your chick can wear a bath towel, a robe, or her classic outfit. The activities in this room are mostly reskinned versions of the downstairs activities. You can play the fish game, play with the eight ball, or have her call someone. But also one of the cooler aspects of this floor is that you can decorate her room. The styles I have unlocked are the sporty room, the groovy room, the surfer room, and the uh, disco tiki room. I'm not really sure what the connection there is. After winding down and getting clean and cozy, there's only one thing to do. Pressing the bed button lets you see your friend fall asleep this time instead of just audio cues in the previous toy. She jumps on the bed and has a short dream before waking back up. When comparing the two main toys in the line, I still prefer the single story home. The added room is cute and it adds more things to do, but I don't think it actually makes it much of a better toy to play with. It's just more interactive dollhouse stuff, like watching your chick brush her hair before bed. If there was more gameplay, maybe it would be worth the fault of the screen, but you can really see how bad the flaws are when the perspective is changed, if you look at it from the sides of the screen or from any small deviation in viewing that isn't exactly head on. I think this idea would have worked better if they actually put in a second screen up top because then they could have done another clever thing with layering on the second floor and not messed up the graphics through the whole toy. 
But you know, maybe that would have made it too expensive for the consumer. What do I know? I don't make toys for a living. With all that said, this pretty much covers everything I found with the main toys in this line besides their connectivity. So now we can move on to some of the extrapolations of the concept. The design of this toy is meant to emulate that of a VW Beetle. It has a compact and rounded look and is painted a hot pink. This car is a lot smaller than the other toys and has a keychain. Both of these features are because it's meant to be an on-the-go toy clipped to something like a backpack. Its connection port is very cleverly hidden under the hood of this car. This toy doesn't feature an out port, only a port in. Its wheels are semi-functional, but not really analogous to something like Hot Wheels. This toy only takes three AAA batteries, and once it powers on, we can take a look inside. Unfortunately, filming this was something of a challenge. The lights are too bright, the pixels too big, and the focus just didn't really work out well with my iPhone camera, but I believe it'll get the job done well enough to talk about this toy. The physical props inside of the toy this time are a mirror, a wheel, and a couple of seats. These all work well with the graphics on screen except for one thing. There are two seats, one in front of the LCD screen and one behind, so I can't really tell if she's meant to be driving on the right side of the car, even though I believe this to be an American toy. And even if that is true, there's this cool effect where they'll have the chick roll down her window, and it's meant to be like the window we are looking at or through, but if that's the case, why is it behind one of the seats of the car? That would make it a window positioned in the middle of a car. So strangely, my problem with this toy is the opposite of my problem with the two-story house. I figure they just should have had nothing in front of the screen and made the screen act as the window into the car. But yeah, the stuff inside the car is less detailed than the stuff inside the house is, but it all still looks cute. This toy sees you and your friend taking a trip around a town and completing different activities with each other. This game has a lot less interactivity and is mostly just a series of buttons you can press to see different things happen. The destination button will take your friend different places like the beach or a drive through fast food restaurant and a host of other randomly decided places. The window button will do that aforementioned effect where the windows roll down and let in whatever random weather is outside inside the car. The sounds button will do things like make your car squeak to stop or a pump. The manual literally says press for different car sounds. And then there is my least favorite button, the radio button. It makes your girl listen to the same three second loop and pause of music over and over and over again with no control of when it stops. It's really, really, really annoying and unfortunately this toy doesn't grace us with a volume button, so it's extremely loud. In general, I think the biggest problem with this toy is how loud it is. I think it would be really cool for a kid if they could have this pixel chick come along with them in their car when they're on a long car trip or running errands with their mom, but I don't think their mom would be very appreciative when the music keeps looping over and over or the dialogue is repeated ad nauseum. Despite that, this is still a cool toy and a nice little add-on to your pixel chick's collection. Ooh, I just love to shop! Big, big pixel chicks love to shop, mom. We're at the mall! Shop salon, food court, boutique, two stores in each mall. Get a job, play games with friends, earn money that you can spend. There you go. Flip the screen, you're up top, spend the cash up till you drop. Pizza, please. Connect them up, have a ball. Shop all four stores at the Pixel Malls. Pink, pink, Pixel Chicks. You can connect them all. Two different Pixel Chicks malls, car and house, each sold separate. The mall is the toy from this line that I own that is most like an actual video game. Progression is quantifiable and earned through that good old capital. And what place exemplifies the center of an it girl from 2005's capital gain and loss better than a mall? Before we get into all that, let's take a look at the shell of this game. This toy is the only one that sort of has like a Polly Pockets thing going on, where it's one thing when it's closed and when you open it you can play with the toy. I'm not sure why they made this choice, but I think it ended up looking cute. As you can see, the exterior of this toy is a little pink purse. There's a pink handle and a clasp, but most everything else about this design is pretty similar to what we've seen before. A port in and out on the sides, and the batteries on the bottom. You can also see that, thankfully, the volume button returns on this toy. 
Now, when you unclasp the purse and open it up, you can see that there are two scenes in here, much like the two-story house. In fact, the screen itself is the exact same thing, just green this time. On the top section, there are two little plants that one would see in a mall, and on the bottom, there are symbols to indicate a hair salon. Everything continues to be represented with cute, bright colors, and the mall here seems to have the most color variety out of all the toys that I own. Again, there are seven buttons, but for the most part, this time, they are different. Let's power on one last time and visit the mall. Now if I'm being honest, most of my footage for the mall was mysteriously corrupted, so we're going to have to talk about the pet store and the interconnectivity part of this video, but I have enough to review the hair salon. The interior of the store is very cute, there's a miniature little hair dryer and ATM, it's all very adorable in the same way the other toys are. I love all the rounded edges. So when your chick is in the hair salon for long enough, she'll be offered a job. Pressing the work button means it's her turn to be on the clock. You have to help her sell services and products and deal with the occasional mishap that'll lead to a minigame. The minigames are accessed with the fun button and can all pretty much be put into two categories, and this goes for the pet store as well. Sorting games, where you'll be asked to sort objects that are falling from top to bottom in the correct categories. And running games, where you'll run from side to side to either catch something or keep it in the air. Both types of games are completed using the buttons on the far sides. There are also a few other activities that I wouldn't really call games that you can do, where it'll ask you to choose between three different options when you're presented with a scenario. After enough work, your chick can take a break using the break button. This will cause her to do something random like chew bubblegum while she takes her singular 15 minute break or whatever. Once you've been a wage slave for long enough, boss men will give you your wages, which being as they are wages of a part-time teenager, you can imagine they aren't very big sums of cash. But they are surely enough for you to feed back into the system. Using the shopping button, you can buy three things from the hair salon. Shampoo, a pedicure, or a new do. The hairstyles are the most exciting part of the store because you actually get to keep the new style. Before I stop talking about the mall in this section, I want to talk about my gripes with this toy. I have the same problem with the flipping screen where it doesn't work as quite as well as the stationary screen. In addition, the hinges on this toy are a bit loose. I don't know if that's just because my toy is old, but it's a bit like when you have an older DS and you have to keep holding the top screen because it's wiggling like a weed in the wind. These are rather minor problems. I think the mall probably has the most long-term value. I think a kid would probably play with this one the most. You can like earn money and unlock new stuff and try to unlock everything by playing enough mini games. It's cute and fun and I think it's a very good addition to the line. Now we can move on to a very important feature in all of these toys. Digital toys like these that can connect to each other are great for the companies that make them. They encourage you to buy at least two because if you don't have two, you're missing out on a main feature of the game. It's kind of like why they release two Pokemon games at a time. On the user side, it tends to provide enjoyment in the fact that you get to expand your little world, and if you're lucky, you can combine your collection with a friend. Virtual pets have been interacting with each other all the way back to Furby's in 1998. They utilize an IR sensor in their third eye that let them blink at each other, and their programming responded in kind. More to the point, Tamagotchi started doing it in 2004 with Tamagotchi Connect, also using infrared. At the same time as Pixel Chicks, a toy line called Cube World made the rounds, which was also about making a little world out of pixelated characters that lived in your toys. Pixel Chicks and Cube World both used a more direct connection than infrared. Pixel Chick in particular has the in and out ports I was talking about earlier. One toy plugs into the other's port and your own little world starts to form. Now let's talk about what happens when you send one of your chicks to the mall, so that we can also talk about the pet store in that mall. So to have your chick visit the mall, all you have to do is plug them into each other and press the fun button on the mall. This will prompt the chick in the house to leave her house and enter the mall. The chick that was already in the mall just like, dies or something until you leave. The now empty house will stay on and occasionally something will happen in there. If we take a look into the pet store, you'll see it's pretty similar to the hair salon until you get past the register. There are a few cages up top and some other tables for pets to sit on. Those pets that I mentioned are the stars of this particular show. There's a dog, a cat, a bird, and a hamster. These guys are who you'll be taking care of when you're at work, and they're also what you can buy with your funds. So yeah, this is just more of the same with a different skin. Once you buy a pet, you can access it by pressing the money slash stuff button which brings up the inventory of stuff your Pixel Chicks owns. This inventory doesn't transfer between chicks. You can dress up your pet, but other than that, most of the stuff in the inventory is more stuff to own or wear or look at. 
Your chick can't keep any of the stuff from the mall when she goes back home, unfortunately, but I think playing at other houses can help your chick level up. Oh, uh, also, the mall chick can't visit the normal houses. She's like a specter that haunts the mall, forever working for $7.25 an hour. Now we'll take a look under the hood and hook up our car to the chick's house. The girls get in the car together and can do everything you can do with just one girl in the car. The feature that is the most exciting is that you can now easily detach the house and take your friend from the house on an actual car trip with you, or whatever you like. It's the only one where the girl will stay if you take apart the toys. I think it's a real fun idea. It's kind of the same idea as the Pokewalker from Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And now you have to use your imagination a little bit because you don't actually need to return the girl back to her home to play with her again. You just need to turn the house back on. She could be in two places at the same time. But I suppose it would be kind of sad if you like transferred your girl into the car and then lost it at school so your house is empty until you reset the game. In any case, I think it's still a very cute idea. Now we can see what two chicks interacting looks like. When you first connect two houses to each other, the girls will start talking over the phone. Leaving it for long enough will make the girls start dancing together. If you press the fun button on one house, the girl in the other house will move to the house with the button you press. They'll greet each other with a hug and then they can do a few different activities together, like watching movies, singing karaoke, or doing that famous trope from media where one girl puts on different outfits and the other one shakes her head until they find the right outfit. They can also hang out upstairs. After a while, they'll decide enough time has passed and go back home. There isn't a lot of interactivity, but you can see a lot of cute interactions between your chicks, so I imagine that'd be really cool for two friends who have these toys. Seeing your little characters play games and stuff would be great fun. It's great fun for me, an adult, alone in my house. Unfortunately, this feature is pretty glitchy. There were some glitches before I played with this part of the game, but once I started connecting the houses together, it really happened often. Scenes will play out out of sync, the wrong scene will play, the scenes stop halfway through, I'm not sure if these issues are specifically a problem with my toys, or maybe this is from their age, but it doesn't work all that well. It's still playable and works enough to get the idea, but it's a bit chaotic. You can connect three things together at the same time, but in my experience I only got it to work as intended like once, other than that it was just even more chaotic. So there we have it, it's about as comprehensive as I think I can make a video about the toys that I have be. I hope that I've expressed my love of these toys well enough that you people watching might start to feel the same way. I think that they're spectacular and they deserve a lot more love. They're aging and flawed, but past that they're cute, unique, and fun to play with. I think all their faults come down to being too ambitious, and I think that's a good problem to have. I couldn't be happier to finally have some of these toys for myself. I still have a good bit left to discuss when it comes to this toy series, even though I'm done with the toys that I own. The toy line expanded quite a lot for how relatively short-lived it is. There are different styles of the car and the houses, they are identical in programming, but the models and colors are different. The mall also has a different form, but it's actually different in content. It has a fashion boutique and a food court instead of a pet store and a hair salon. Other than things that are pretty similar to what I own, there are many very different toys. To scratch that digital pet itch, they made two toys based off of some animals that have already been featured in Pixel Chicks. You can own a little hamster cage or a dog house with the respective animals inside. They do normal animal things with your chicks, but there's a quite cool mechanic where if you flip your toy upside down, it's revealed that that pet is actually a secret famous musician at a concert. The toy itself also transforms into a performance mode. The babysitter house sees your Pixel Chick employed as a babysitter. You do normal dealings with babies, things to keep it happy and healthy. The really cool mechanic with this game is that they managed to put four rooms into one house. A small dial on the side can be twisted, which rolls the next diorama into your view. It looks really awesome, and it's probably my most wanted toy in the line. The Pixel Chicks TV moves away from the central gimmick of the series, and it's just a plain LCD screen. You can watch it little scenes play out on it, and the game can be controlled with a little remote shaped like one of the chicks. I think it was made as a response to Cube World, because it seems to use the same magnet lock system that Cube World works with. I'm disappointed with its lack of the really cool dollhouses, but I think it still looks cute, 
And I've never seen a wireless remote on one of these toys before. Tab Life City is kind of like the final evolution of the world of the game. You can explore a whole city instead of just a room. Unfortunately, it again does not use the transparent screens. I couldn't find much about what you actually do in the game, but it seems like more scenarios for you to see your friend in. One cool feature is that the little chick on the top of the game actually moves from building to building to visit them in the game. I suppose that is the thread connecting it to the original idea of mixing the plastic with the digital. Also, apparently it's a piggy bank, but I'm not sure where. Tab Life City is the final toy that was released in the line before it was discontinued in 2009. I wanted to end on a high note, so now we can talk about the biggest and most expensive toy in the line. The six-roomed Pixel Chick's Roomies house. The transparent screen can be moved between the six different rooms depending on where you want to visit. In addition, there are now five different girls that will live in the house together, if you pay for the other four that is. There were little toys with lenticular faces on them for each of the girls. And if you wanted more, you'd ask your mom to buy the small bit of plastic that unlocks them at Target. The available roomies are Punk Rocker, Super Smarty, Miss Sporty, who comes with the house, Diva Queen, and DJ Hip Hop. DJ Hip Hop is the only girl in Pixel Chicks that is implied to have dark skin. It's pretty shitty of Mattel to only ever have one dark skinned character in their series, but I guess I prefer this than like a white hip hop girl and have no black people at all. At any case, there just should have been more people of color in the series than one. I do think that this toy is a pretty cool idea. More girls, more rooms, more fun. It looks pretty fun at that. The game is controlled by a little remote. And it looks like you can do all the fun, normal, virtual friend stuff, just more of it. I'd also really like to have this toy. Also, in some countries other than the US, there were Pixel Chicks McDonald's toys, but those don't really count. They were like those little Tiger Electronic level games that McDonald's used to do in the 2000s. Cheaply made and all, but they might be cool, I'm not sure. One day I'd like to own every single one of these toys and just put them all in one big room and turn them all on at the same time, and it'll blow out my ear eardrums, but finally I'll be at peace. EverythingGirl.com was a website that was very popular in 2004 and onward for kids and preteens. Hasbro used it to host Flash games like the ever-popular dress-up genre and aggressively market to girls. Specifically, they'd market things like Barbie, Polly Pocket, and Pixel Chicks. Pixel Chicks had a lot of online content available, even its own large section on Everything Girl. And I think it's important to talk about that because lots of people spent their childhood using the site to play games. One person in particular, Waddle D on DeviantArt, saved the website's resources in 2015 when Mattel shut it down. So thank you person on a comment thread on DeviantArt that I stumbled on. Really made this part of the video possible. Another resource that let me make this video is archive.org. I'm sure you all know of their amazing efforts of internet preservation. They've captured an infinitely important part of our history and continue to log the internet as it becomes increasingly bigger and bigger in all of our lives. The Wayback Machine is a good resource and I'd like to encourage you to donate to it if you see this video. I never want them to shut down. People like them who store information will always be useful. Also check out their really cool library service and actually everything they do is really cool. So contribute to the free access of information and donate to them. I think that they should be subsidized by the government. They're as important as any library. PSA over, let's get to the website. For the most part, the website is navigatable on archive.org, but for most of the games, I use the DeviantArt backup to play. It's standard fare for a website from this time. One of the things you may start to notice is that there's a lot of options for you to enter some sort of secret codes. It seems that in most every toy past the ones I have, there's some sort of code involved that you can then enter to the website. I suspect with the arrival of things onto the scene like Webkin's, UV Funkies, and Club Penguin codes, Hasbro figured that their most digital product at the time should try its hand at the concept. Entering in a code can do things like play a little animation on the website or do something in a flash game. I always enjoyed this kind of thing as a kid. It felt like unraveling some sort of mystery. Other than that, you can do things like get a screensaver or purchase the toys online. There's a t-shirt creator that allows you to design your own printable t-shirt design. Interestingly, there was also a downloadable application that put a chick on your desktop. It's sort of a truncated version of the normal game, but she walks along on your taskbar. It's very cool, I think we should bring this type of thing back. At some point we figured not having a bunch of clutter was worth getting rid of our desktop toys. You can drag your girl all around and press buttons to make her do stuff from the game. It doesn't run perfectly on a modern computer, but it's quite adorable. As the writing of this video, Adobe is about to kill off Flash. 
Well, this doesn't mean all art made in Flash is suddenly going to disappear. There are already great ways to keep Flash running without Adobe. But even still, it's going to motivate a lot of websites to abandon content without saving it somewhere. And overall, it's the end of an era, which is always kind of sad. Flash was an amazing way to let people play games and watch animations over terrible internet connections. It inspired many, and a lot of great things came out of it. People around my age grew up on Flash. Nostalgia is too commodified in our society, so I don't like appealing to it, but the undeniable fact is that Flash as an art form had a great effect on everyone on the internet. So let's talk about these shitty Flash games, and remember how many other shitty Flash games we played as we say our goodbyes this month. A large amount of the games aren't that interesting, and a good portion of them are clones, so let's get the ones I don't really want to talk about out of the way pretty fast. Hamster Spiel, or Jamming Hamsters First. I played this game mostly in German because I thought I didn't have an English version, but I did. It's Pipe Dreams but with hamsters. I like that the pipes fall so your choices matter later in the game. Now Flipping Kitchen. Rudimentary Cooking Mama is the name of the game. Pretty fun, quick little game, I enjoy the pixel art in this one. Monster Baby is next. The chick had a bad dream from too much Donkey Kong, and now she is trapped in a clunky clone of it. The baby she's been watching is now a monster and wants to kill her. The game once had a leaderboard, I wonder what the high score was. Sub and Sink, this is just a little underwater game. Don't hit the walls or the enemies and collect bubbles. I also enjoy the pixel art in this one, especially of the Manta Ray. Onto the four-legged race. You have the keyboard mash, so your little critter wins a race. Easy mode is too easy, hard mode seems nearly impossible. Finally, Golf. Isometric mini golf game, it required a secret code to play, so I couldn't get into it. I was also able to find a pinball game within it, but I couldn't get past the plunger part in it. Now let's get to what I have more to talk about. First is Mystery Boy in 60 Second Shop and Swap. In 60 Second Shop and Swap, you have 60 seconds to pick out three items that you like from the mall. In Mystery Boy, you invade the privacy of a boy you don't know and look through his stuff in his car. After that, you pick out words from some lists and make a Mad Lib about them. I'm not really sure why. It doesn't seem all that related. My new neighbor. Mystery boy must really love burping. Just look at this guitar. There's a really weird smell in here. It must be that sports magazine. Then again, he has a dumbbell. That means he's totally lame. Ooh, he has a soccer jersey. Maybe he'll let me borrow it sometime. I'm really into sweating, too. Hmm, looks like he's been reading a water bottle. That's how you know he's noisy. Check this out. It's a stinky sock. I bet he collects them. Okay, no more snooping. I'll put his mp3 player where I found it and get back to sneezing. Mystery boy is so smelly. My roommates are gonna freak out. Anyways, the games themselves aren't so interesting as how they interact with the Pixel Chick's roomie's house. First, you need to plug in a 3.5mm audio cable into your roomie's house and also into the output of your computer. Then the Flash game sends info to your house using audio signals so that the stuff you did in the game will affect the roomie's house. I find it a really cool and unique way to make interactivity to the website just using audio signals. I never heard of this being used before. And if anyone watching knows of something like this, I'd like to hear about it. Pixel Chick's Mud and Show slash Fashion Show. This is another game I thought I only had access to in German, so that's what I played it in. It's a main staple of Flash games, a dress-up game featuring the chicks. There are a host of options that you can personalize to really make your ideal chick. A nice feature of this game is that since normally the girl is in black and white, you can color pretty much every clothing or hair option, whatever color you like. I decided to try to make a Pixel Chicks version of Garfield. After you get your girl dressed, you can pick some music for her as well as a runway design before she hits the stage. The chick will strike a few poses, and you get to take pictures of her. After that, you can do the classic thing Kids Game always wanted you to do and print it out. I think Flash Game designers were hired by Big Printer Inc. to get kids to waste as much printer ink as possible on pictures of cartoon characters represented in bad quality on printer paper. Anyways, fun game, hard to go wrong with the dress up game. Pixel Chicks Movie Maker. I saved the best for last. I love movie makers, I always have since I was a kid. I think that's such a good output for creativity in a child, and they're probably one of the first things I ever did on the internet. I could only get this to show up really small, so I'm sorry for the quality. There are a wide variety of characters, actions, scenes, and emotions. You can arrange them how you want and then have them say what you type in. I think I can demonstrate it best just by showing off a video that I made in the game. Keep in mind, I couldn't use words like die or gun.
Later. Those are all the games that I know about. I did at one point find a demo reel for the people that I assumed did most of the Flash games for Mattel, and there was a screen cap of a Pixel Chicks game that I never found, so if anyone knows about it, please tell me. Anyways, these games are a great glimpse into the era of Flash, and I think if you're interested you should take a look. I'll link it in the description. So in 2009, The Lion was discontinued. In 2015, the website was taken down, and since then, the series has faded into the back of memory. There are a few dedicated fans and a good amount of people who had them as kids, but there's not really a community around this line, unfortunately. The hopes of a real Pixel Chicks revival is basically non-existent, which is unfortunate considering that transparent screens have made a lot of advancements in recent years, and this kind of gimmick is the only type of thing that anyone needs a transparent screen for. Screen technology like this is probably too expensive, however, and no one is clamoring for a new toy in the line, so Mattel probably is just going to leave this one in the archives. On a more happy note, there has been a toy released that might scratch the same itch for anyone who loves these toys. Pixel Stars hit the market this year, and it has a similar concept and a similar name, so I can't help but think that it's inspired by Pixel Chicks, even though it's being made by Skyrocket Toys, with seemingly no connection to Mattel. Pixel Stars is a digital friend much like Pixel Chicks. You do activities, take care of your friend, and level them up to get more stuff. This time around, it's based more on being like an Instagram famous person, because that's like the it girl of 2020. You can be a celebrity chef, a model, or a fashion designer. It seems a lot more expansive than Pixel Chicks, and the art is extremely cute and bright. Speaking of bright, this thing has a full color LED display. Unfortunately, this doesn't have my favorite feature of what I assume is its spiritual predecessor, that being the depth that came from the transparent screen. But it definitely seems like it's probably a better game. It does have this really cute feature where when you close the cover of the screen, you can see a silhouette of your friend moving around her house. Really cute attention to detail there. I hope I can get my hands on this toy someday, and maybe I'll even talk about it in the future. Buying these toys and making this video has been really fulfilling for me. I finally have this toy I've always wanted, and I was able to exhaustively talk about it to the full extent of my ability. I really think they're great, so if you ever come across one, maybe pick it up. A lot of care went into this toy and a lot of creativity. I consider them great pieces of art and I hope to expand my collection. Before I close out this video, I want to say fuck Mattel. I don't really like them as a company. I don't really like any companies, but Pixel Chicks is still pretty rad. Uh, hi, uh, this is the sort of at the end of the video thing. I have a few thank yous I want to say. Um, first, I'm going to thank Tomatalk, uh, specifically Tomacass, uh, the user on Tomatalk. Uh, they're the only person I really found talking about Pixel Chicks on the internet, and a few other users on Tomatalk. It's a, it's a forum for people who like Tamagotchi specifically, but a lot of Digipets, and they were a good resource when I had a few questions about how to play the games, as well as uh, I found a link there to the uh, DeviantArt comment page that uh, I was able to get the website off of. So thanks Tomacast, thanks Tomatalk, they're cool, it's a cool website. Um, thanks to my friend Coda for uh, voicing the little part with the uh, ad lib in it. Uh, he's really cool. I'm going to put like Instagram here or whatever he uses, Twitter. I don't really know. Um, thanks to uh, God. Thanks to me for finishing this video. It took me a lot of time. Uh, speaking of that, I want to say sorry if the microphone quality sounds weird. I got a new microphone and I don't really know how to work it. And I, it took a lot of effort, but I think I got it so it sounds okay. And if it doesn't, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, show it to other people. Um, I really think that this is a good video. And I think you should like and subscribe, like they say. Um, is there anything else I need to talk about? Um... Uh, I looked around the room. I like looked at my dog. I was like, Augie, you have anything that I can that we can we can say at the end of the video? I don't think so. Um, if you have any ideas, 
if another video can make. I have a next one, and I don't know if, when it'll come out. I've been watching a lot of Star Trek. I have a few ideas about like sexuality in Star Trek that I want to make a video about. I also want to make a video about a um, old PC game that's the Deep Space Nine game. So if anyone has interest in that, either. I don't know. I'm saying that no one watches this. Speaking of that, if you do watch this, send it to a friend. I did I already say that. I think you should send it to a friend because um, pixel tricks are cool and I'm cool and I want people to. I want 500 views on this. So if there's not 500 views on this and you see it, you see on the view counter there's not 500. I want you to take it and send it to your mom. Um, so thanks everybody. Um, oh, and I'm trying to release this on my birthday. So tell me happy birthday because I'm very I'm a very special girl and I deserve a happy birthday. Um, all right. Good night, everybody.